Einstein formulated the general theory of relativity in 1915, he was sure that the universe had to be steady. He therefore modified his theory to make this possible, introducing a so-called cosmological constant into his equations. This was a new anti-gravity force, which, unlike other forces, did not come from any particular source, but was built into the very fabric of space-time. His cosmological constant gave space-time an inbuilt tendency to expand, and this could be made to exactly balance the attraction of all the matter in the universe so that a static universe would result. Only one man, it seems, was willing to take general relativity at face value. While Einstein and other physicists were looking for ways of avoiding general relativity's prediction of a non-static universe, the Russian physicist Alexander Friedman instead set about explaining it. The Friedman Models The equations of general relativity which determined how the universe evolves in time are too complicated to solve in detail. So what Friedman did instead was to make two very simple assumptions about the universe. That the universe looks identical in whichever direction we look and that this would also be true if we were observing the universe from anywhere else. On the basis of general relativity and these two assumptions, Friedman showed that we should not expect the universe to be static. In fact, in 1922, several years before Edwin Hubble's discovery, Friedman predicted exactly what Hubble found. The assumption that the universe looks the same in every direction is clearly not true in reality. For example, the other stars in our galaxy form a distinct band of light across the night sky called the Milky Way. But if we look at distant galaxies, there seems to be more or less the same number of them in each direction. So the universe does seem to be roughly the same in every direction, provided one views it on a large scale compared to the distance between galaxies. For a long time, this was sufficient justification for Friedman's assumption as a rough approximation to the real universe. But more recently, a lucky accident uncovered the fact that Friedman's assumption is in fact a remarkably accurate description of our universe. In 1965, two American physicists, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, were working at the Bell Labs in New Jersey on the design of a very sensitive microwave detector for communicating with orbiting satellites. They were worried when they found that their detector was picking up more noise than it ought to and that the noise did not appear to be coming from any particular direction. First they looked for bird droppings on their detector and checked for other possible malfunctions, but soon ruled these out. They knew that any noise from within the atmosphere would be stronger when the detector is not pointing straight up than when it is, because the atmosphere appears thicker when looking at an angle to the vertical. The extra noise was the same whichever direction the detector pointed, so it must have come from outside the atmosphere. It was also the same day and night throughout the year, even though the Earth was rotating on its axis and orbiting around the Sun. This showed that the radiation must be coming from beyond the solar system, and even from beyond the galaxy, as otherwise it would vary as the Earth pointed the detector in different directions. In fact, we know that the radiation must have traveled to us across most of the observable universe. Since it appears to be the same in different directions, the universe must also be the same in every direction, at least on a large scale. We now know that, whichever direction we look in, this noise never varies by more than one part in 10,000. So Pentheus and Wilson had unwittingly stumbled across a remarkably accurate confirmation of Friedman's first assumption. At roughly the same time, 